Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. We've got some breaking news coming out of uh, the Middle East once again. This time here, this is only just, uh, just very recently here. Uh, late this evening, there was a dogfight over Greece between the Turkish uh, military warplanes that violated the airspace of Greece uh, and between, of course, Greece's uh, warplanes that scrambled up to meet them. The difference is, is Turkey came in fully armed and then engaged into a dogfight. Makes you wonder whether or not Turkey is not trying to actually ignite World War III. Are they the playing card by Obama or something? I'm really beginning to wonder what's going on here. Let me kind of blow it up here on the screen for you guys so you can see a little bit better about what's going on right here. And, uh, and then let's see if we can't... Uh, uh, Oh, goodness, it doesn't allow you to see very well there. Back off just one time. There we go. Uh, Turkish fighter jets entered Greece airspace Wednesday, prompting the response of two Greek aircraft and leading to a dogfight between the two sides. The first such incident of its kind since a failed military coup Turkey on July 15th. Two Turkish F-16s violated Greece's airspace southeast of Rhodes and south of Castellorizzo shortly before 4 p.m. and were pursued by two Greek fighter jets dispatched from a base at Sonda Bay. According to the Defense Ministry officials, a separate pair of Turkish jets then entered Greek airspace and engaged in a dogfight with Greek aircraft. You heard that right, guys. Two more armed entered into Greece into a dogfight. Uh, that's Turkish. The Turkish jets were all armed, according to defense officials. The Greek-Turkish relations have been strained in recent weeks following the comments by the Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan and other Turkish officials questioning international treaties that establish the borders between the two countries. A misinterpretation, however, of more recent comments by Erdogan would suggest that he had called for a referendum in the Greek region of Thrace, needless needlessly aggravating the situation. In the wake of the mistake, the head of the Greek's embassy press office in Ankara has been ordered to return to Athens, sources indicated on Wednesday. Anytime you go to bringing back in your people from another country, such as Russia did recently, but it kind of got out to the public, but Russia called back its own citizens, at least those that were studying abroad that were uh, children, et cetera, and relatives of Russian uh, officials were requested to return home and continue their studies in Russia and not abroad. And that was both the United States and in Europe. It really lets you know that it puts everything on the edge of the seat there for possible conflict. So, and that's not the only thing going on here. Another one here, this was here, came out on Twitter right here. Uh, strength by uh, the Syria, strengthened by recent gains, the FSA uh, rebels give the SDF, which is the Syrian Defense Forces, 24 hours to vacate Tel Rafat. I mean, telling the Syrian army to get out. Now, here's where the explosive part is here. The SFA and, and the, uh, or excuse me, the FSA, yeah, the FSA and the SDF, of course, Syrian Defense Forces, is backed by Russian warplanes doing the bombing there. But the FSA, this here, this group here of a bunch of thugs there are backed by artillery shells by Turkey. So you want to talk about putting situation here on a tense standoff. Uh, well, let me just drop the volume down on this here. But this is them giving their announcement right here for, in the Arabic language, for the Syrian Defense Forces to leave the area there of northern Aleppo there or face that they're going to go out. And I'll tell you that one guy, my gosh, if that don't look like a demon there. Every time his eyes open, it just like a devil standing there. Actually, a couple of them, all, most of them do. This is terrible. I mean, it's really terrible what's going on over in this part of the world there. But they have, they have warned the Syrian Defense Forces to leave. And when Russia begins to bomb not only these guys here, but when Russia begins bombing the Turkish people that are shelling the Syrian Defense Forces, then you're going to really have a war break out in the region. I can certainly see where it's going to get really, really bad. And of course, Greece is also part uh, of, of NATO. So if uh, Turkey hits, hits with 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 a NATO member or anything like that. There's already strained tensions we've been seeing between the United States and that of Turkey. Uh, and, you know, it could easily erupt. The, the Middle East is just a powder keg waiting to go off. And not to mention, 
Turkey is in Iraq right now, Mosul, part in, in the United States too. By the way, something I didn't even bring up as of yet, I don't know if even, anybody even knows this as of yet. I mean, there are people, there are a few people out there that do, I know. But the U.S. has dropped their, uh, their airborne troops, have landed uh, south of Mosul. They are there on the ground, United States boots on the ground south of Mosul. And let me just see if, if I can quickly, actually, you know what, I think maybe RT has brought this out. I don't know if it's RT or maybe it was uh, Sputnik. Just quickly as we kind of wind down this broadcast right here that they have actually, um, um, I don't see it right up here, right off the top of my head here now, but I, I will pull that up later this evening. Uh, we'll be probably running one more news broadcast tonight, uh, but I want to bring that out to you. Yes, the U.S. has put boots on the ground, uh, quite a number of airborne troops that, that landed in, dropped in by helicopter there to be a part of the attack that is happening on Mosul. Uh, there has been uh, also word that they have allowed a lot of the ISIS forces to escape out of there into Syria. Seems like that's been planned by the, uh, by the Obama administration from the beginning. It is definitely going to turn into a mess, no doubt about it. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.